The Pittsburgh Steelers, huh? I can't lie, their squad is pretty solid. Kenny Two Gloves. Kenny Small Hands. What DBs did whenever they saw him throw the ball last year? Uh -huh. <laughs> Alright, my bad. This is borderline bully. <laughs> Kenny Pickett is nice, though. He is already 25 years old, which is quite old for a guy going into his second season, but I think he will remain my franchise QB in this video today, and probably theirs in real life as well. I think he showed some glimpses last season. His stats don't look the best on paper, but I think I think he could be a solid starting QB. You know, one of the coolest clips that always pops into my head when I think about Kenny Pickett is that clip of him in college for Pitt when he did that fake slide and then took it all the way. <laughs> oh, fuck. Damn, not that slide. Runner. Don't sleep on those legs. Oh, he faked the slide. Sauce time. Pick it. Did that work? Touchdown, Pitt. Najee Harris going into year three now, and they still don't have his face scan. Yay, what are we doing? Who the heck is that? Although, to be fair, it kind of looks like Najee Harris. I don't know. <laughs> Was that racist? El Mundo! Now, luckily for us, Najee kept his superstar development even after an underwhelming sophomore season, I'd say. His yards per carry weren't that good. He just kind of lacks that explosiveness, that home run speed. But, um, you know, he's not that type of back as a whole anyway. And I'm still a fan of Najee. Really loved him at Alabama. So um, I will try to develop him into that that running back that we all know he can be, you know, maybe cater this offense towards him and hopefully he can become a beast. Deontay Johnson is still a superstar as well. We'll take that. And I got one question for you guys. Is George Pickens the best wide receiver in the league? Hey, you tell me. You tell, you tell me. You tell me. Now, all in all, though, Pickens was an animal in his rookie season. He was so good. He was a highlight machine as well. I think he's a top candidate to break out in his sophomore season as well. I can't wait to just watch him on Sunday standing in front of my TV. Dude, what the heck happened to Allen Robinson? <laughs> Come on, you gunners. Just kidding. City till I die, baby. <clears throat> Move. Broderick Jones was the Steelers first round pick in 2023 he was picked number um somewhere between 2 and 32 this dude is a beast though absolute unit out of Georgia as well should be my franchise blindside protector for this entire video Pittsburgh Steelers in defense those two words just always go together you got TJ Watt you could easily argue is the best edge in the league he's got a cool brother too Minka Fitzpatrick at free safety IMO best safety in the league in my eyes i think it's either him or derwin james either way you can't go wrong but minka minka's just different it's kind of criminal though i think he's not a superstar x factor i mean come on now cam hayward is still going strong at the young age of 34 still x factor 93 overall should be amazing for us but only for maybe one or two more years it's gonna be hard to replace that man and with the first pick in the second round of the draft thank you bears the Steelers selected Joey Porter Jr., of course, son of Joey Porter. This pick just made too much sense in real life. And, you know, the Steelers also needed DB depth, so he should cover that as well. And hopefully in this video, we can develop him into, you know, a lockdown corner, CB1. Shout out, Pat Pete, I, I guess. <laughs> Me when I go out with the boys. <laughs> Get it? Because, like, kill, kill a brew, kill a brew. We do not care. Now, overall, this team is solid. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a few question marks in a few positions and a few older players that we're going to have to replace later on as well. But I think in about year four or year five, we should be able to bring home a Lombardi. So let's get into things. And would you look at that? We got a mentor rookie. This was the best message from last year. I don't think it changed. Or I hope it didn't. <laughs> Ooh, and it's going to be for Darnell Washington, who I didn't even mention. Six, seven, five beast of a tight end one of the best blocking tight ends the best blocking tight end in the class last year Muth wants to mentor him I think long-term development's the wave here and if all things go to plan he will get a development upgrade to star so cross your fingers and something new in Madden 24 is the training camp all right it's like new but like it wasn't new because they brought it back you know what I mean dude honestly first season we might just rip some of these why not target passing Kenny Pickett let's go I would like to you know get some early skill points for the boys get some easy XP a little bit let's go a right here bullseye double okay we'll take that okay we might try to hit Deontay here I gotta I gotta wait for the perfect time right in the bullseye I didn't get the second one but completed pass as well we're up to times four come on we only got two more remaining here I'm kind of folding I can't lie right there just hit the target please oh double double bullseye bang come on how are we still at go okay i was gonna say how am i still at bronze bro all right kenny pickett you did your thing first try come on now that's a sign of things Twenty-eight thousand. and you know i've also seen on twitter that you could get development upgrades from doing these as well i think it's just completely random can we get one okay i actually haven't got one yet so that's the first one i've seen kenny pickett ladies and gentlemen is going up to superstar development 
Do your training camps. Wow, we got a dev upgrade five minutes in this video, man. Come on. Rushing attack for Najee Harris. Imagine he goes, dude, look at Darnell Washington. He is a monster. Imagine, though, we can get Najee up to superstar X Factor. What's he doing? Come on. This drill is not too bad, though. Basically, just, just run it in the end zone every time. Don't worry about juking somebody out or doing fancy points, even though I'm going to still do them. You know, if you just get into the end zone and get those multipliers, you're pretty much going to get gold every time. Oh, no, I don't like this one. Najee showing off the showing off the wheels. Come on, get in the end zone. Bang! It's another golden. Can he go up to X Factor? Imagine, imagine the scenes. Najee Harris, don't do it to us. Nah, we don't get it, dude. That that other one was the first one I've ever seen. So now I know it's true. Now I'm high. I might be playing these every year, bro. Honestly, <laughs> we'll do a little wide receiver battle too. Let's do George Pickens. Come on, this one ain't too bad as well. Basically, just just beat your man. A little do a little cutback. Go outside. Get the 400. Rinse and repeat out of bounds okay never mind <laughs> don't do that what's that pass pick it those tiny damn hands man I'm, I'm sorry kenny okay we have four remaining we're already at 5k so this is pretty good i might go deep again why not pick it let it fly pickens Woo -hoo -hoo. that's a sign of things to come in this rebuild come on i might have been a little late on that that should be gold though come on another one in the books no dev upgrade on this one but we do get the skill points and the xp Let's do chase and tackle. Who should I do this with? I might try and do it with Nick Herbig. He's a rookie out of Wisconsin, I believe, and a defender out of Wisconsin to Pittsburgh. You've heard it before. Nah, but for real though, invest some stocks in that guy. I think he's going to be good. And if he could go up to start development after this, even better. Honestly, what was I supposed to do there? I feel like I did everything well. Nick. Nick, I just talked to you up, bro. What are you doing? I guess I shouldn't be like hit sticking. I don't really know. Let's just try a safe wrap up. Oh my god, I mean, we barely even got him down. Dude, Najee's just a tank. I'm there. Hit stick. We're 30 seconds in, and I have 2,000 points. I'm pretty sure you need 30. Nick, what are you? I'm restarting. I'm restarting. Bro, this drill is actually infuriating. Because, like, even when I get to him and I make the right tackle and everything, he'll just break it off. Like, what the? Why is he running? Nick Herbig. More like Nick Her Small. <laughs> get the, get. Oh my God, he might be the. I, I need 30k, dude. And I had negative like 300 in the last one. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna lose my mind. Like, what am I supposed to do? All right, a little sweep here. You know what? Safe wrap up. It. <laughs> Is this even possible? You know what? We're just gonna go through the full thing once and just see what I can get at least. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? But that's a safe tackle. It's a Yeah, I need 30,000 points to get gold. We're um, we're almost there. Almost there. Dude, I have 16 points. We're 18 seconds into this thing. Oh my, I, I might be here all day. It's just a game. It's just a game. That Jesus Christ. What am I watching, dude? He's the best. He's the best. He's the best of all time. He's the best of all time. Is this is this even possible? I uh, one more. One more time. I guess I just gotta safe wrap up every time. You know what? That's what I'm gonna do. Safe, safe, safe. Just get him down. Nice her big. Come on. You are sir sir. What the heck was that? This is getting me. This is getting to me. This is gonna bring out the worst in me. Get the please, please, just a safe one. Just a safe wrap up, man. Just a safe. Take out all my. I went again. I went again. I'm sorry. I'm too. Last one. Last one. I promise. One more win. One more win, guys. <laughs> what? Yeah. Safe. Safe wrap up. Safe wrap up. <laughs> one more. One more. One more time. Doesn't count. just a rebuild it's just a rebuild video why are you even doing this why are you even playing this all right we're 30 seconds we're on pace for about 900 points guys we need 30k oh my god what how do you get tackled dude Najee better get 2,000 yards for 25 touchdowns this season for us oh my I'm done. 
I'm done. I'm I'm done. I just I just rage quit on a train. I don't even know why I'm back on this screen. I'm gonna do one more. We're gonna give Joey Porter DB battle. I believe he is hidden dev, right? So imagine, imagine superstar. Now this one shows you the route, so it's not too difficult. Or yeah, yeah. dude, dude, what? Am I just ass? Oh, all day, all day. Give me that. Give me that. Let's go. I'm running the route for him. I'm running the route for him. Oh, we got this one clamped. Three picks in a row. Coverage stack. Come on. We already got gold, baby. Let's go. First try. Oh my God. 10,600 points. And oh. Bro, I might have to get the other one done for her big. We got another superstar. Joey Porter is going up to superstar in year one not even year one we're barely into year one we're like a five percent in come on i don't know <laughs> am i willing to put myself through that suffering again honestly no no i'm done i'm done <laughs> but you could say it's worth it because kenny pickett is now a superstar development he's only a 73 overall as well so honestly that's so big let's do strong arm since the cpu won't do that break sack play action throw accuracy mid and throw power nice and joey porter jr is still hidden development but he should be superstar and he got 300 snaps played with that as well that is so worth it if only i could get the other one done let's do zone here why not plus one agility plus two zone let's go and i think i'm good now let's finally get to simming i simmed one week and pat frymuth has a message for us and darnell washington's going for star dev ladies and gentlemen we have gotten three development upgrades and we haven't even simmed to the regular season that man is cheating that man is not real we're at the mid-season mark now and we are one in five National Scout this year is going to be on defensive end. I'm looking for that replacement in case Cam Hayward decides to leave. And to be honest, we don't got much depth there anyway. And as you can see, there are three defensive ends at the top of the class here. L L Damian Chamberlain. The dude just sounds like he's going to be the best edge rusher of all time. <laughs> Ratings are pretty solid around. Okay. I mean, we're bad enough to potentially have the number one overall pick. <laughs> Jazario Weathers. What? These are the coolest names I've ever seen. Whoa, look at this cornerback. AJ Lowell out of East Carolina. 6'2", 22 years old old as well ratings are all right nothing spectacular but his um his core attributes whoo he would be fun next to joey porter for the future and also just for the future i'm gonna make george pickens our wide receiver number one i would love for him to develop into the guy and then let's make joey porter the cb1 why not he's superstar dev mock draft number two ladamian chamberlain goes number one we do currently though have the fourth overall pick oh okay we just beat the jags 21 14 and look what we got here if Najee harris can go up to x factor that would be amazing for us simulation gods bless me here please we lost 21 to 4 well he didn't get the four touchdowns <laughs> he most likely didn't get the okay, i'll just let him i'll let him speak for himself embarrassing <laughs> can we beat the packers in week 10 okay we're back to our losing streak but we got some focus players oh okay so we already have the edge fully scouted he's only around one you know definitely not generational yeah his key stats aren't that great are they so Maybe it doesn't even matter if we get to number one. This fullback looks insane. <laughs> Chris Shields. That is an awesome name for a guard, you know, because they like they they're like the shield for the court. I'm going to put one on this edge. Vernon Newman. Second one on the corner we saw earlier. AJ Lowell. Will Gay. <laughs> Honestly, Chris Shields. Why not? For player negotiations, we don't really have any big names here anyway. We only have four mil. We are now at the end of this season and no playoffs for us. Surprise, surprise. Six and 11 bottom of the AFC North. My team ranks in good God. We were awful in every department, bro. We were last in points per game. 16.8. Kenny Pickett in year two was i don't know not good i'll say that 3500 yards not even 25 touchdowns and then 14 interceptions Najee was all right almost 1200 yards over four carried nice <laughs> nine touchdowns as well i guess that's that's a decent season receiving wise deontay johnson hit a k on the dot five touchdowns for him as well pickens was okay a rob was okay muth barely had over 500 as well just disappointing year for the entire offense but the defense really wasn't good either right this is the side of the ball where you can expect or always expect you know the Steelers to be great and they just weren't for me Cam Hayward 19 TFLs 17 for TJ Watt their Highsmith 16 sack numbers though TJ Watt eight and a half after that it just dies off and eight and a half is nothing for a player like TJ Watt you know what I mean Joey Porter though the superstar gets himself four picks leads the way we had absolutely zero picks as a whole though barely any joey porter and half of them we love you josh allen i love you josh allen anthony richardson wins afc offensive rookie of the year the colts go 12 and 5 as well that's crazy 
Defensively, I was hoping for Joey Porter, but he finishes second. So close. KJ Hamler was the second best wide receiver. What are these names? Corey Davis, Isaiah McKenzie. <laughs> James Daniel actually finishes top five for best online. I believe he's star development already, so he might go up to superstar based off my online rule. You already know. Real ones, no. Joey Porter actually finishes top five for best DB. What a debut year. To be completely honest with you, I don't think we're going to get many dev upgrades because that was a terrible season. Pickett, Najee, everybody says the same on the offensive side. Broderick Jones is also a star development. I could upgrade James Daniels so defensively. Joey Porter, obviously, we know he's superstar. Yeah, we literally got nothing. <laughs> I will move James Daniels up, though. If you guys don't know if an offensive lineman finishes top five and has already started development, I usually would just bump them up to superstar. If they finish top 10 and they're normal, I'll bump them up to star and so and so forth. So I'm not cheating. Oh, he changed him to superstar. No, it's just a thing I do. Because like the amount of comments I got last year where everybody's just like, oh my God, he's cheating. He moved the he moved the offensive line up a dev tree. I'm like, bro, stop. I literally explain it every video like it's a TED talk. Super Bowl winners are the Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Burrow, Super Bowl. MVP they beat the Vikings there 35 21 wow that'd be a fun Super Bowl Jamar Chase versus Justin Jefferson of course Joe Burrow as well the LSU core Mike Tomlin has also never had a losing season ever in my first year I, I do that so nice <laughs> oh where'd you come from what the heck fifth year option I'm actually gonna decline we have no where is all our money I was gonna decline it and maybe so I just clicked the same damn thing. I was gonna decline it and maybe give him like a longer term contract, but we don't even have money to do that, bro. Who is taking up the money? Cam Hayward, we could save a lot of money by cutting him. Teach about, of course, we're not cutting. Allen Robinson, you've got you, you're gone. I'm sorry. I'm getting nine mil from cutting you. Get the hell out of here. See ya. Who else is in here? James Daniels, he's a superstar now. I ain't, I ain't gonna cut him. Pat Peterson, we'd save a little bit of money as well. Mason Cole, Nate. <laughs> Wait, that's not even the guy. Wait, who was the guy? Wait, who was it? What's the, it's Nick, right? Wait, are they brothers? <laughs> this team and their brothers, bro. They actually are brothers. <laughs> the Hayward brothers, the Watt brothers, the Herbig brothers. <laughs> Patrick Peterson, see ya. I mean, he's also a 66 overall. I'm, not, I'm just gonna cut it. And after all that, we got about 20 million available salary cap now. So let's go to free agency and let's try to improve this team. Got names like Amari Cooper, Mike Williams, Levante Davids here, Christian Wilkins, Michael Pittman, the other Josh Allen. Not bad, not a bad class. Shout out to Kirk Cousins. Never forget. All right, we're actually not doing too much here in free agency. Just Sean Murphy bunting and DJ Jones. Okay, second evaluation, and we did get SMB. Oh. <laughs> Has anybody ever called him that? And DJ Jones now is an off from the Vikings. Nice. And he went to the Vikings. I think overall, offensively, we're fine. We kind of just need to develop the young guys like Pickett and Pickens. Pickett, maybe not so young, but you know what I mean. Defensively, we could do with some work for sure. I'm looking for... Oh, did I not get... Wait, where's Sean Murphy Bundy? All right, there's Sean Murphy Bundy. We, I think I'm going to draft a corner in the draft. There was a few good ones as well. Maybe a linebacker and a D tackle, and then we'll see where we can go from there. The cornerback that we fell in love with way, way back, AJ Lowell, has actually rolls up to the number one CB. Now we have him 95% scouted. He looks like an absolute animal. B catching, A man, B zone, B press as well. Just 22 years old physicals. Pretty solid all around. 454 is a bit slow, I can't lie. I'm gonna put my first focus players on Steven Perkins. He looks like an absolute beast. Second one on Chris Givings, a safety out of Washington State. And the last one I'm gonna put on right tackle, Greg Rogers. He looks pretty solid as well. Now, all of those players are a little lower on the draft board. We should have a high pick as well, so we might be able to trade down, make some more. We got pick number seven. Steven Perkins is a round one talent. Chris Givens, we don't know his talent, but his ratings look amazing. Yeah, AJ Lowell, the guy that I've been scouting for a while now, all the way down at 24. I don't want to go too far back because, you know, good players always get drafted high. 15 would be pretty nice. We also would get a future third rounder. Do not mind that one. Not gonna lie, this one is tempting. The Vikings all the way back at 31. Obviously, they just made the Super Bowl, but we, but we did see Kirk Cousins in free agency also offer me that future first. That could be super valuable, but I would fall back so much. So it's either this Falcons one or the Vikings one. And as good as AJ Lowell is, I mean, look at later on in the class. You got Lance Harris, Terrence Elliott, who look equally just as impressive. Jalen Anderson later on as well. Look at this guy, Keenan Matthews. Look at those ratings. Oh, wait, the Vikings signed Kirk Cousins back, but he is 36 now. He's only going to go down, right? I'm going to ask for their first this year, their first next year, and maybe a second as well. Maybe, maybe we'll even throw in a third. Let's just start it off high and see what Minnesota says. I haven't even added mine in. <laughs> I'm kind of just banking more than anything on Kirk Cousins regressing, you know? That is very close. Okay, we can get this done for sure. Let's give him a 2026 fifth round pick and... Okay, 2025 sixth round pick and... 
Bruh. Seventh round pick in 2026, and the trade is accepted. We're moving back from seven all the way to 31, but we're getting a future first, second, and third round pick. This could be a massive, massive, massive trade. This trade alone could change the entire landscape of this rebuild. The Vikings traded up all the way to seven to get their new QB. Okay, oh, I did not think about it like that. James Bohannon out of TCU. He imagine he might be crazy, bro. I might have just screwed myself. For some reason, I didn't even think about it like that, that they're trading up to get their franchise QB of the future. But whatever, Chris Givens is actually still here. And you know what? I think I'm going to take him. He's going to be the safety partner alongside Minka Fitzpatrick for years to come. He's still only 21 out of Washington State as well. His key ratings are good. His ratings overall are okay. He ran the fastest 40, though, for a safety. Had the fastest three-cone drill as well. I don't mind this pick at pick number 31. End of the first round here. Chris Givens, can you be our first hidden development of Madden 24. Welcome to the squad. We're going to have the best safety duo in the league for years to come. Come on. And now I got to find out which corner I want out of Lance Harris, Jalen Anderson, or Keenan Matthews. Maybe even Jose Stallworth. I think it's a toss up between Jalen Anderson here. As you can see, he's got A man, which is incredible. His zone is A to C. Even if it's a C, it's not that bad. B press as well. 21 years old, 6'1 out of West Virginia. Man, he looks good. His acceleration ain't the best agility. Change direction, all solid. Jumping is elite, though. He ran a 4.36 with great speed, as you can see there as well. It's either him or Keenan Matthews, the other guy. He has very well-rounded stats. We can see them all already. He's 22 years old out of Tennessee. Ratings are pretty similar as well. It's kind of a coin toss. Overall, I think Keenan Matthews had the better combine. As you can see, he finished second in the vert jump, broad jump, um, top eight in the 40-yard dash. However, Jalen Anderson is one year younger, 21 years old, and his combine definitely wasn't bad either. He ran the second fastest 40, the third highest vert jump, seventh in broad jump as well. I think Jalen Anderson is going to be my guy. That A man cover is just like has my eyes lit up. Like, I love that, you know, and he's only 21 years old. Him alongside Joey Porter. And then, of course, our safety group now with the guy we just drafted with Minka, Jalen Anderson. Make it two for two, baby, to start off Madden 24. We do not get a hidden development. If the other guy, if Keenan is hidden, I'm going to be very sad. Very, very sad. However, hopefully Jalen Anderson can develop into a beast because his, his athletic ratings out the park. And he should be a high overall as well, right? A man coverage off rip. Oh my God, Chris Shields is gone. No way. So with the seventh pick in the third round, I'm going to go with Alex Elston, a defensive tackle out of USF. A to C block shed, B finesse moves, B tackling. Power moves a little low at a D. But I think it's going to be all right. We do need just defensive line help as well. And with Cam Hayward's retirement, you know, lingering above us, we got to get some depth there immediately. So Alex Elston will be my guy. Had a pretty good combine, pretty good ratings overall there. Third round pick. It's going to be our second hidden development of the draft. Number 69, big 69. Welcome to Pittsburgh. Welcome to the Steel Curtain. Come on. Shout out Cam Thomas on the Nets. See, now he killed his ratings in combine. Oh my God. Elite jumping, good speed. He was first in bench press, vert jump. Broad jump was third, seventh and 40 yard. Okay. I'm going to go Cam Thomas. He might be lower overall than Scarborough, but he has those physical traits that you just cannot teach. And hopefully we're banking on you know, a hidden development. And, you know, we could just build upon the future with him in the DB room. Overall, though, I just need depth as a whole. So get on my team. Cam Thomas, we made the right decision. Hidden development here in the fourth round of the draft. 94 jumping with 91 speed and acceleration. We just got a gem. And our DB room is looking way, way better than it was coming into the draft. Hey, overall, I'm pretty happy with that draft class. You know, we traded way back, but we improved our draft capital in future years heavily, especially next season. And I think we got some good players as well. Given 74 overall, Anderson, who I believe was only normal dev, right? But is actually the highest rated player we got at a 76. And then I believe Elston and Cam Thomas here were both hidden development as well. I did get a 75 fullback in the sixth round. CPU got me a pretty decent receiver, 70 overall. Let's check out this class as a whole, though. The highest rated player only is 77, but three of them, Jose Stallworth. I mentioned this guy. He is only normal dev, though, so I ain't too mad. But dang, joint highest rated player in the class going in pretty much the end of the second round, though. There were so many corners. Like, here's our guy, and then Lance Harris, who I saw as well, went the pick right after us. 
he's only normal too who was the other guy we wanted aj lowell we got to check out aj lowell he went at pick number 21 i've been eyeing this guy since the beginning of time and he is hidden development goes to the jags he went pick 21 too so no, i could have traded back a fair bit he is only a star though so i'm not gonna be too upset over that you know keenan matthews also a 76 overall the corners in this class are outrageous he goes to the panthers he's hidden development too looks like he would have been the better pick than then anderson he is only star but would have been nice overall though that class was kind of mid i think we did well overall though kind of just want to check out ladamian chamberlain real quick that is the most fire name ever ladamian chamberlain superstar dev actually before we move on we gotta check out the qb that the vikings drafted because we have all of their draft capital next year they chose a bus i ain't even worried baby <laughs> and for the second season now i just completed this staff tree where we can reveal a hidden development for one of our players oh hold up this is the guy that the cpu drafted me in the in the second round and he is a or in the seventh round and he's a hidden development okay i think we're just gonna do our first pick which was chris givens the safety let's see what he is yeah look at that 70 overall we're gonna make him our wide receiver three right away he could develop into an absolute gem but let's go ahead and check out givens only a star development unfortunately day like i said we're in year number two now up to an 81 overall squad i'm not even really too sure what we were last year the offense pretty much remains unchanged except for a beast of a fullback now here and then tyrell youngblood gem seventh round hidden 70 overall love to see that we're just kind of banking on guys to develop kenny pickett Najee harris george pickens pat fryman with darnell washington we need you guys to go up quick and go up fast um broderick jones as well defensively we did lose some pieces but we went with a lot of draft picks here including elston who i'm going to start right away thomas um who's going to be our four string corner as well we brought in sean murphy buntings and free agency got givens now as our new safety pairing with minka the team should hopefully be a little bit better it's kind of all down to pick it i'm probably going to keep the playbooks on pittsburgh for now here in year number two if we struggle again then i'll probably change it but now do you see what i see Ooh. damn what the, it's practice bro doing db battle now with jalen anderson the first corner we took off the board who was unfortunately only normal development hopefully here we can get him up to star development that would be very nice because he is such a high overall already even into that and he picks it off nice clamps absolute clamps another pick we're already at gold four reps remaining jalen anderson come on give me the devi he is so quick oh my god another pick Dude, gold was like 8k 10k we're at 22 and a half thousand 29 000. oh my surely you get a dev upgrade if you just like kill it right oh no i choked i choked dev upgrade at 30k i choked jalen anderson does not go up to star dang might do one last one here db battle red zone let's give it to chris givens the new starting strong safety he is star development we already know that this one is a little tough because you actually cannot see the route and everybody's just faster than you Who's number 28? What in the world? That should be mine. How does he catch that? Dude, like I was all over that. He's just faster than me. If this is an actual number 28 receiver like Nikhil Harry, we're going to have problems. How could I play that any better? How? Throw it. Bruh, what was that? <laughs> another one and we're at gold let's go chris givens another one we don't get man tyro youngblood was the number 28 receiver stop that dude just be normal please just be normal number 11 it's fine <laughs> mid-season mark and it's an improvement on last season we're actually three and four and second in the afc north the super bowl winners Bengals from last season are two and five more importantly though let's go check out if we got any Hidden development. We do not have Tyro Youngblood just yet. Elston is only a star. And then I believe Thomas. We're probably not going to get this year, to be honest. <laughs> Player negotiations. We have James Daniel here. And he has little to, he has literally no interest in joining us back. Najee doesn't really either, despite being 88 overall. Now, Fryermuth is here. Deontay Johnson. Cam Hayward. Oh my God. We have a lot of core players here. Start off with Fryermuth. I definitely want him to stay. He's an 87 overall, still just 25 years old as well. I might bump it up just a tiny bit. We have a ton of cap room to work with. He's excited to stay. Let's go. Najee Harris up to an 88 now with a scheme fit doesn't fit and our win, hit, win history is not good, is it? We'll bump up the money a little bit. Now she's actually happy to stay. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I'm going to try to get James Daniels back. He's 81. He's superstar development as of last year, of course. 
I'm starting to like the offer, but I'm unsure if this team gets me the future I'm looking for. All right. And then Deontay Johnson and Cam Hayward. I'm going to wait until the end of the season before I figure out what I want to do. We lost 24 to 17 to the Ravens who are still undefeated, but we have a breakout DB. If Jalen Anderson, please. That's the guy I would like the most. It's going to be Chris Givens, the safety to go up to superstar. That would actually be huge. We would have him, Minka, and Joey Porter all at superstar development. He needs less than 150 passing yards against the Bengals. That's not going to happen. Or just get two of the defensive stats. Oh, where are we? Okay, we're away, unfortunately, in Cincy. I was going to say, because last year when these teams played in Pittsburgh, Joe Burrow threw four picks in like the first half, I believe it was, the week one crazy game. Hopefully something similar to that. 35 points probably means they had a, over 150 passing yards. However... He had a pretty quiet game out there. Dang. Now we have the Chiefs in week 10. We are now bottom of the AFC North at a 3-6 record. And after this Chiefs game, it's probably going to be 3-7. We got smoked. Jalen Anderson was player of the week, though. He had a pick six against Mahomes. That's pretty cool. So I have defensive ends as my three-star scout. Again, I'm looking for that generational guy that can replace Cam Hayward. Unfortunately, just doesn't really seem to be anywhere near a generational prospect in this class at all for either of these positions. Year two is in the books and it's another six and 11 season. And I'm looking at some of the playoff teams on this screen and I see the Minnesota Vikings made it in at 10 and seven. So that pick is gonna be in the twenties. 16th in offensive yardage this season. It's way better than last season. 21st, we did improve. We improved numbers wise, but not in the win column, but not really for Kenny Pickett as well. Once again, really disappointing year. 3,800 yards, 24 touchdowns. He's just throwing picks to everybody. You can have a pick. You can have a pick. You can have a pick. Najee was pretty good this season. Over 1,200 yards, 4.3 carry again, I believe, and at 13 touchdowns. George Pickens was wide receiver one, put up almost 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns for him as well. Fryermuth had a good year, 830. Tyrell Youngblood, 800. Deontay Johnson fell over Cliff, only barely 700. He didn't even get 700 yards and only three touchdowns we probably will not be renewing his contract Tyrell Youngblood is only a star could you imagine he was like a superstar in the seventh round that would have been sick but yeah I'm totally happy with moving on to Tyrell Youngblood and letting Deontay Johnson walk Cole Holcomb leads the way for tackles made it with 111 TJ Watt 16 tackle for losses 12 for a few other players but the sack numbers are so underwhelming you know why is TJ Watt getting single digit sacks this uh defensive playbook is probably not it and this is probably going to be the last season we stay with these playbooks because the results are just so disappointing, are they? They're so underwhelming. Joey Porter, another good season with three interceptions for him. Yeah, this disappointing year. Super Bowl is going to be Bills Packers, a pretty fun one, but it looks like the Vikings actually did lose in the wildcard round to the Falcons. Let's go. You do not see this every day. A running back wins MV. Tyro Youngblood is your offensive rookie of the year. Okay, could he go up to superstar? Who knows? Defensively, though, I'm hoping we got one here as well. Keenan Terry, who the heck is that? Chris Gibbons is number two. Jalen Anderson is number four. Simolo was top nine. I, I can't even be asked to change him, to be honest with you. It takes too long. <laughs> Let's go check out some dev upgrades. Not expecting too much. Tyro Youngblood actually went up to superstar. Okay, that is an instant replacement for Deontay Johnson, who, like I said earlier, we're probably going to let walk. I will. I love that Tyro Washington going up. Um, On this side of the ball... The defense was actually not terrible this year. We didn't get anything, though. Jalen Anderson didn't go up. We still don't know what Cam Thomas is. I do know what he is. He's a bucket. <laughs> and the Buffalo Bills bring home their first ever Super Bowl trophy against the Packers. 27-24 Super Bowl MVP, none other than Josh Allen. The good news is we have 86 mil available to re-sign players or sign new players in free agency. We're going to weigh on this Kenny Pickett fifth-year option. Cam Hayward is still an 88 overall, and I feel like as long as he's here, I got to keep him around. I want him to retire here. I want to give him one last ring as well he's here to stay he's happy to stay we love him james daniels i'm gonna try for again we're gonna bump the money up just a little bit more and hopefully he stays he enjoyed he's gonna go to free agency though whatever we got about 70 mil joe burrow is here what the heck why <laughs> nick chubb as well okay our division is getting weaker you love to see tyron smith is here two was here josh sweat wouldn't be too bad tommy townsend is an 85 overall okay quandra Diggs. It's a bit of a weird class. Tony would be cool. Stonehouse, Justin Reed. This is a weird class, dude. The Bengals won the Super Bowl two years ago and they don't re-sign Burrow. That's kind of, I thought they like fixed that. I don't know. I don't really like that. You know, Burrow, I feel like is going to be in Cincinnati for a long time. I mean, I guess it helps us though. Okay, we need O-line help desperately. Oh my God, center, right guard, right tackle. We could potentially bring in another receiver as well. And then defensively, Cam Thomas, we can see now is actually only a star. We need linebacker. 
Maybe that's it. Maybe just depth. Let's try to bring in Elijah Moore. Only 25 years old, 82 overall as well. I feel like he'd be a really good number two for us behind George Pickens. So let's let's give him a deal. Actually, I'm gonna lower it a little bit since he's really interested. And there's actually nobody else um that has an offer for him already. Connor Williams, I want you. We need a center bad. I'm gonna try to get Isaiah Win as well. Like I said, we just need O-line help desperately. Okay, Connor Williams is still here. We're still at the top offer there, but we did manage to get Elijah Moore on that pretty cheap deal too. And Isaiah Win is also here. Connor Connor Williams on the next one. We go three for three. Let's go. Improvements to the team. We do still have 45 mil left in available salary cap, but I think that's it for me in free agency. I kind of just want to remain flexible for the future. And I think it's time to start shifting our focus to the draft. 2025 NFL draft. And remember, we do have the Vikings first, second, and third. Our pick is at number 10. We could make a lot of noise here in this draft to improve our team. And it looks like the picks are going to be number 21. So look at all those picks we have. Did some private workouts off screen. We did this guy right here, Nigel Keys. He's around one to two, going round two to three. So definitely interested in him. I did Denzel Bradford. He's tough eye projection, but only around one talent. So not too sure if I'm too in love with that, but we could go him for sure. I did a right guard right here, 93%. He looks all right, but you know, just the later rounds in a tackle whose stats right here look really good, but he's around two to three talent, unfortunately. Looks like we have Rashawn Gary's long lost brother. <laughs> I'm gonna sim like the first three. If that edge that I had fully scouted is still there, I might have to trade up for him. The Saints, uh, don't do it to me. They go with that guy. Okay, Texans, I'm gonna trade up. I'm looking at Darnell Washington's stats as our backup tight end. He only had 10 receptions last year, 80 yards. The year before that, only 70. He's just not really too involved, is he? I think I might throw him in a trade offer to the Texans here just to sweeten it up a little bit. Along with some third round picks, we'll take out this one for now and see what they say. Still yellow. I mean, they have red interest in him, which is quite sad. Add that third round pick back in. It's only just green. Okay, the first round pick last time was pick number 21. We'll try pick number 10 this time to go up to number four. And it, are, are you kidding me? <laughs> add in a seventh round pick and that should do the... We'll add a sixth round pick and get rid of the seventh round pick. And the trade is accepted. We are moving up to number four, trading away pick 10. A future... Or no, pick 10, our latter third round pick. The Vikings won Darnell Washington. And then a future sixth round pick. And I'm doing this to take Denzel Bradford. The 6'5 power rusher out of Utah, 22 years old, B block shed power moves, a tackle. Unfortunately, F power moves, which is quite disappointing. However, physically, he's an absolute tank. Did very well in the combine overall. Has elite strength, great speed, great acceleration. He is explosive off the edge, no doubt about that. A awareness as well, a stamina. He should be a high overall. We traded up to get him. Can he be the Cam Hader re replacement for the future? It's big shoes to fill, but I got my trust in my guy Denzel Hidden development let's go you love to see a 90 strength 86 acceleration as a power rusher as well that's pretty insane so with pick number 21 i might try to look to shop this around and try to get you know a proven talent in the league already jalen, jalen johnson dj reader greg newsome mike evans but he's regressing 86 overall now 32 years old hollywood brown travis kelsey is here that's crazy that guy sucks hello michael gallup jalen phillips as well as a third round pick that's not a bad shout. Landon Dickerson's here. Drake London. Adoree Jackson. CD Dews. JC Horn. Wow. Jawan Bentley. Some good offers here. The one that is intriguing me the most. Wow. Devon Witherspoon. Superstar development as well. That would not be too shabby. The one that intrigues me the most is definitely Jalen Phillips, though. Just basically means we'll have him alongside TJ Watt. He's still just 26 years old. 85 overall. Star development. And we get a third round pick as well. You know what? I'm going to send it. That's our first major trade for a big, big player. Come on. Pick 10 in the second round. We're going to keep bolstering this defensive line with Shane Hall. We got him fully scouted. He's around one to two talents. So the value is pretty good here in the second round as a whole. His ratings are all right. He does have elite strength, though, which I like to see. Overall, though, I just want more depth on the defensive line as a whole. So he should definitely help that. Shane Hall. Only normal development, unfortunately. But like I said, he's just going to be more of that role player, that backup option for us. Pick 21 now in the second round. We're going to get our guy, Nigel Keys, who I fully scouted. We know he's around one to two talent. This dude looks really, really sick. His ratings, elite acceleration, change of direction, speed. Combine was actually a little underwhelming, but that is all right because we know the talent that you have. This is very good value here in the late second round as well. He might be my starting linebacker as well. So Nigel Keys get on the team and be normal development unfortunately but another player to have he should be a good overall so i'm not complaining oh my what in the world
This dude is not real, bro. He is not real. KJ Franklin, round three to four projection center. Ratings. Everything's pretty much elite besides speed. Combine. Everything's first besides the 40-yard dash. Oh my god. This guy's insane. This might be a generational center, if you know what I mean. His ratings look really good as well. I'm not going to wait any longer. We're at pick 10 in the third round. KJ Franklin, get the hell on my team. Easily. A hidden development. He's still only 21 years old as well out of Michigan. We just got ourselves an absolute world beater in the third round. Oh, we actually have the next pick as well. This is the Dolphins pick then. Joseph Murray, outside linebacker out of Georgia here. Looks really good. Key ratings, B block shed, zone coverage, ADC tackle, A pursuit as well. Physically, pretty solid as well. He has elite speed. Got second in the 40-yard dash, third in bench press, second in the broad jump. Third round pick. I can't complain with a player like this, right? Hidden development as well. Okay, him with the other guy that we drafted are going to be my linebackers of the future for sure. I'm pretty happy with that draft overall. I think we did well. The Jalen Phillips pickup is huge as well as Denzel Bradford is a 75 overall. Really good rating. Hall's a 73. Keys is a 73. Franklin's a 73 as well. 74 for Joseph Murphy, who we got in the third round. Wow. And this class as a whole, there was a 69 QB that went number one overall to the Raiders. Their highest guy in the class, Steven Gentry. I did see this guy. 81 overall goes to the Cardinals. We could have got him. We were pick number or no we traded up to number four huh he is hidden development guess we'll check him out because i am a little intrigued and he is a superstar dang there's a 76 overall wide receiver in the fourth round saint and there was two of them chuck kyle trayvon ward this guy was like the number two player in the class he was actually still there at number four i was a little intrigued on uh, about him but we ended up signing elijah moore so i was like eh, we don't really need him too much he would have been nice though um he, he would have been nice. That's that's for sure. <laughs> well, hopefully this guy was worth the things. We picked him right before Kirk Terrell. Year three, we got another reveal hidden development player we can go for. We got a few to choose from this year, but I'm going to go with the guy I traded up for, Denzel Bradford. Oh, it looks like the CPU drafted me a hidden development offensive lineman later on as well. We will definitely take that. And I revealed Bradford, who's only a star, and I chose ahead of a superstar X-Factor wide receiver. And a... <laughs> And here we are in year number three. We're up to an 84 overall squad now. I believe last year we were 81. So some nice improvements there. The offense is pretty much still the same. We do have Franklin now who I moved to right guard. He should be an animal. Actually, went up two overalls as well. We added in Isaiah Wynn at right tackle. And Elijah Moore is our new wide receiver too. And our defense is kind of a mixed bags, right? We have like those blue chip guys, no doubt. Cam Hayward, TJ Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick. But then we, of course, have our rookies or our sophomores that are still developing in Murray, Bradford. We just got Elston, Jalen Anderson, Chris given so it's kind of a it's kind of a mixture of both combination but after two struggling seasons with 12 combined wins we are now changing up the schemes and the playbooks well, i'm going to try out west coast zone run disguise 3-4 we're going to try out the dallas cowboys playbooks the cowboys are always insane in simulation and i think the baltimore ravens are the best for a 3-4 system so let's see how it does we're in year three now am i really about to do more training camp the answer is yes i'm always horny for dev upgrades what how do you drop that? Kenny Pickett is now a super... Ah, oh, damn it. Back-to-back -back seasons getting no dev upgrades in training camp. After getting two in year one as well, bro. Pain. And before we go to the midseason, Mark just completed this entire offensive development tree. And the last one here is slow rating regression for one season for one position. You guys know what I got in mind. It is, of course, going to be right defensive end for Cameron Hayward. Midseason, Mark, and we are 4-3, and three, which is not amazing. But it is our best record that we've had at the midseason point so far. So... I guess I'm happy. <laughs> we also have the 0-6 lines up next. What's going on over there? We'll go check out some rookie developments. The right guard, Franklin, unfortunately, is only a star. I was really hoping he would be a superstar after his insane physical ratings and all that good stuff. Did I even have anybody here I could check? I don't even know. Murray, and he's only a star as well. Okay, we got TJ Watt here available for a new contract. Kenny Pickett, George Pickens, Jalen Phillips, who I just traded for. Cam Hayward is back. Cole Holcomb, Calvin Austin, Larry Vanilla. First and foremost, TJ Watt. He is 30 years old now, but he's still a 96 overall. He's still our best player by a long shot. And he's actually happy to stay. Welcome back, TJ. Can he pick it now? I'm going to give him a long contract and just give him a ton of money. I want him to be our guy. I want to win with him. Hopefully, we... Really? George Pickens, wide receiver one. I don't think I'm going to bump up anything. He has a lot of interest in joining us back. Maybe I even go down a little bit. 
and he still thinks it's perfect let's go and then for Jalen Phillips I'm gonna wait till the end of the season I think we got a weekly award one here it's Joey Porter Jr four tackles two picks one forced fumble and a fumble recovery wow do I smell a breakout to x-factor maybe maybe try to get another deal done with Kenny Pickett here I'll raise it just a little bit more please just come back to us he's happy to stay for the next seven years you better give me a Lombardi we just went 13 and 4 and have a bye week what? I was not expecting that after we after week one where we lost zero to 38 to the Vikings who have that QB that sucks as well we actually started off 0 and 2 picked it up here though four wins in a row lost to the Jaguars and then we went a little crazy after that another four wins in a row but we ended off the season so hot five straight wins full momentum going into the playoffs it's our year it's our freaking year baby and Kenny Pickett was kind of the same I guess but he did get us to 13 wins now which is something we got him the big contract now as well but these are eerily similar stats from the last three seasons <laughs> Kenny I know you came out a little bit older but I mean did you already hit your ceiling Jeez. rushing wise okay nausea was an animal absolute animal 15 touchdowns just about five a carry and over 1600 yards Kenny Pickett even came in with 439 yards on the ground himself okay Pickens was our best receiver with 1146 yards five touchdowns for him Tyro Youngblood six touchdowns almost 800 yards Elijah Moore had a pretty decent debut year for us and moved to this thing too but defensively is where I think we made some noise Joseph Murphy 116 tackles tackle for losses 18 Cam Hayward 17 Jalen Phillips 15 for TJ Watt and he finally got double digit sacks although it's still kind of an underwhelming um number for tj watt you know i'm expecting 27 from him cam hayward jalen phillips with eight there out est elston the defensive tackle with six and a half joey porter we had a lot of picks though he had six john murphy bunting with three cole holgum three jalen anderson minka fitzpatrick whoa overall still we were eighth in the league for offensive yardage and then defensively we were third yeah defense was crazy and in the divisional round we got our playoff rivals they're just rivals in general to be honest <laughs> what are you expecting from this game well considering this is the most black air force energy of a division we have it's gonna be a hard-hitting brawl defensive players on both teams will have plus five hit power oh no i'm kind of scared even with the injuries off <laughs> let's go ahead and sim this though the 13 and 4 steelers against the 13 and 4 ravens we come out with a victory 30 to 24 let's go come on first time in the playoffs we get our first win against a divisional rival another 13 and 4 team that is big time that's a lot of momentum Saimalu this little piggy went to the market this little piggy needs a ring and all their little piggies are walking home to watch from the couch huh what your defense will have plus five hit power again and plus five staff points let's go however in the conference championship we got another 13 and 14 maybe maybe we hop in and just watch a little bit here the buffalo bills and of course with josh allen it took a little while it took a little while i can't lie you know first two seasons 12 combined wins but in year three we have arrived we are here kenny pickett is that guy Najee harris is him the defense is back to what it's supposed to be and we got a duel in the afc conference championship let's go Wait, they actually have his handshakes? <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of fire. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. I guess he is the cover star. Too bad we're about to embarrass him today. First quarter underway, they actually scored the first the, the first two touchdowns of the game. Okay. Gonna need a big third second quarter here. We do score another touchdown. They get a field goal. We get it up though to 14-17. Now we got a good game here. 20 to 14 to end off the first half second half underway here we got the ball i mean no one is scoring no i mean nobody literally scored in that third quarter at all change the gameplay camera what the heck is that what is that button <laughs> i don't know kenny pickett throw in once again your fry fryer mouth is that fryer mouth oh my god what a massive play i believe that is can i get a move gronkowski travis kelsey george kittle and now it's pat frymouth next up on that list baby naji I feel like I had space there. I don't know why he cut back like that. Second in seven onto the 12. Kenny Pickett knows what he sees. I don't know what that even means, but he completes it for another first down. Um, he's having a decent game. 14 for 21, 207 yards. Doesn't have a pick, but George Pickens gets us the first down anyway. And here we are onto the three with a chance to take a lead in the AFC Conference Championship. Our first lead of the game as well. We're handing it off to the fullback we drafted, right? We drafted this guy. I think his name's like Goss, Ross, Wayne Ross. 
the next legend in Pittsburgh, baby. What? Did not think I'd be watching my drafted fullback from a few years ago scoring the AFC Conference Championship, but this, this is what it's about. We had 98-yard drive. Oh, my. We're going to sim the Bills' possessions here. They start off very deep on their own three, I believe that was, onto the 10 now. And it's going to be a quick three and out. We get the ball back in midfield to really build up on this lead. Dude, what in the world? There is a fat fly in here. You've got to be kidding me. Fryermuth once again, though, breaks another tackle. He's an animal. Dude, this thing is huge, bro. What the f Kenny Pickett, legacy defining drive. Leg legacy defining third and six. Najee Harris has space. He has blockers. He gets the first down. Come on. First and 10, handing this one off to Najee Harris. He breaks the first tackle, picks up another first down. On to the 44. Now in Bill's territory, Najee Harris on the outside has space, breaks another tackle. This man is different. It, it looks like the, the chase and tackle draining drill. Looks like it came into fruition. <laughs> Dude, this thing, like I'm trying to just not even worry about it, but I can just hear it like buzzing around. And it is so annoying. Bro, Najee is an another first down for Najee Harris. This is the perfect drive because we're killing time. And if we can just get at least three points here, I'll be pretty happy. We're, we're already in field goal range. Dude, Fryermuth. Pat Fryermuth and Najee Harris are the absolute cornerstones of these of this offense. Absolute chain movers. As we're just a yard away from being in the Bills red zone here, Kenny Pickett drops back to pass once again here. <laughs> Kenny. Kenny. And now's not the time. Now's the time to play conservative. Now's the time to kill the clock. What are you being aggressive for in this situation? Oh my god. Bro, it's right. What the? We got to watch this defensive possession. Our defense was the reason we've made it this far. It's not off to a good start. Josh Allen, big chunk right away. It is actually third and five, though, on the 48. Bills, what do they got cooking up? Josh Allen's going to drop back to pass again here. Rolls out to the left. And it is none other than Jalen Phillips, the man we traded a first round pick for last season. He's coming up in the biggest of moments for us. That's why we make those trades. Here we go. First drive, Kenny Pickett drops back, slings it over the middle. The two minute warning has now passed. The Bills still have all three timeouts. It is a third and eight though. This is a game winning first down. Can Kenny Pickett? Pick it. Are you, he did pick it, but you know. <laughs> What are you doing, Kenny? I hop on to watch the fourth quarter of an AFC Conference Championship, and I've watched our QB throw two interceptions in the most crucial of moments. Who the heck is this? Here we go, though. They're already on our 44, and I mean, they only need a few yards to get in the field goal range. However, we still got the beast that is Cam Hayward. The clock is still ticking as well, little by little. They do still have timeouts. Why are they running the ball? They are not in field goal range yet, right? Yeah, timeout. It is now third and 12. Our defensive line is held absolutely strong as ever. Cam Hayward is still doing his thing. Josh Allen back to pass in empty. Is that Cam Hayward again? Nah, bro. Nah, sign him. Sign him for the rest of the year. I don't care. I mean, obviously, but I. this guy needs to retire a Steeler. No doubt about that. I will not let him leave for any other team. Fourth and 21 for the game. It's that, is that Joey Porter? Is that Joey Porter? Bro, now nah, the defense. The defense is too nasty. Kenny Pickett tried his damn hardest to throw that game for us. And with 45 seconds remaining, Kenny Pickett and the Pittsburgh Steelers are in victory formation. And we are headed to the Super Bowl, baby. Pickett, I did not really like what I saw from you in that fourth quarter, bro. That was tough to watch. But our defense luckily saved your ass. 18 for 32, 35, two touchdowns with those three interceptions. Could have been killer. Josh Allen did not have a great game at all. Our defense definitely held him back to, you know, what we're used to seeing out of Josh Allen. He still had a decent game overall. Najee, 67 yards there. Who the heck is Clyde Duhon? Of course, though, we did manage to see Wayne Ross our own drafted fullback score for us check kyle is just the best wide receiver of all time i guess fryermuth we saw make some huge plays for us tyrell youngblood got an in or got a got a touchdown george pickens was all right as well elijah moore also found the end zone but no doubt the mvp of that game was cam hayward he was incredible on that last drive i mean him and jalen phillips did really well this game tj watt got a half a sack as well but they both had three tackle for losses combined too i mean that's that's just nasty that's different I think I got the fly, bro. I don't. <laughs> and in the Super Bowl, we got the third 13 and 4 team in a row here in the playoffs. It's going to be the Dallas Cowboys in a rematch from 1976, um, where the Steelers actually did win. You're probably asking, why do you know that? Because I looked it up. <laughs> I just saw it. Josh Allen is MVP. Yeah, not to us. We we made that boy silent.
What does that even mean? Oh, that Chuck Kyle guy was a rookie. G I mean, who the heck is this, too? What are the Bills cooking? Joey Porter Jr., best DB in the entire league. Is that Superstar X Factor I'm here? What's up, Dicker the Kicker? Development upgrades. Najee is probably the only one that could get one on offense. He had a really good year to Superstar X Factor. Does not go up, unfortunately. Elijah Moore stays at normal. Fryer Muth stays the same as well. Defensively, though, Joey Porter Jr. is a Superstar X Factor. And Jalen Phillips, the man we traded for, goes up to Superstar as well. Wow. I think also Cole Hogan went up to Star, so nice <laughs> every coach's dream is to hoist the lombardi trophy as confetti rains down and you have a chance to do that for the first time this week what would it mean what would a win mean to you honestly it's just the beginning this team is still young we're still ready we're still hitting it out in the draft as well we're still hungry for more even if we win this we got 10 staff points for that let's go and before we hop in here i would like to check out this cowboys roster how okay well micah parsons is obviously still micah parsons they have nick chubb which is crazy. CD Lambs an X Factor. Also 98 overall. Zach Martin still going strong. Dax up to a 95. He's up to X Factor too. Trayvon Diggs is up to X Factor 94 overall. They still have Pollard. Nick Chubb and Pollard. What in the world? Malik Hooker. I mean, everybody on this team has just developed into a monster. Michael Gallup is superstar. And you know what the coincidence is? Will Gay. I remember this guy in the draft a few years ago. Cowboys playbook. Cowboys playbook is what got us here. Shootmakers are super. Everybody on this team is just superstar. They still got Deuce Vaughn. And let's go ahead and get things going here in this Super Bowl. First quarter, first five minutes, no points, but we get the first touchdown of the game. Our defense is holding strong as well. 14-0 Cowboys score their first touchdown in the second quarter, but our offense is on fire, putting up 21 points in the first half. The Cowboys respond again with 14, and in the fourth quarter we go, we go up 28-14. Not only is our defense clicking, which is what we saw last game and all of the season, but our offense has been on fire as well with this Dallas Cowboys super team. Dak rolls out to the right here, slides just in time. We would have rocked that man. He should have activated his X Factor there. <laughs> and when you're running with Dak, hit LB for his X Factor. LB is my X Factor? Crossing into our territory now. Dak drops back once again here. Finds Nick Chubb in the flat. Joey Porter actually does very well there to wrap him up. Second and seven. Chubb in the backfield. Dak drops back once again. Slings it out to the right for number two. Second and ten. They're going to hand this one off to Nick Chubb. Really? Kind of a weird play call there. The Cowboys are kind of known for having weird play calls, though, especially come playoff time. Third and 10 now. Dak Prescott. That's a dime. I can't even lie. And here we go. The game winning play. Fourth and three. If we stop them, we win this game. We just won a Super Bowl. It's my boy Murray, who I drafted. Joseph Murray, I believe it was. This year as well plays, plays a huge role into us winning a Super Bowl here in year three. I did not expect to be even in the Super Bowl this early. I thought it was at least going to be year four, year five, but this team really just took that jump. Just sim the rest here. We're probably just going to kill the clock a little bit. We do punt the ball off to them. Cowboys only have two timeouts left. They are kind of driving here, but the clock is ticking and it's ticking and it's ticking. They cannot score at all. They do end up scoring here on sidekick. We get the ball. And ladies and gentlemen, a Super Bowl is coming back to Pittsburgh, baby. That is ring number seven. And Kenny Pickett under center in this insane defense has done it in under three years. What a rebuild. So this is all still the same, pretty much. <laughs> Dude, surely they can like have like maybe four to five, three to five, like different celebrations, you know, or just like they do different things every other time. So it's a little bit random, but it's just the, the same one over and over and over and over. <laughs> But here we go, Kenny Pickett hoisting that Lombardi trophy, being, bringing it back home to um, Pittsburgh, of course. I wonder who a Super Bowl MVP is going to be that game. I think our defense did really well, but our offense, I mean, scoring 28 points is no joke as well. Let's go, baby. Pickett had a solid game. Oh my God, he had a really good game. 25 for 32, 255 yards, two touchdowns, and more importantly, zero interceptions. Really good game there. He outplayed Dak. Dak was coming from behind, though, so he was kind of just slinging that thing. Najee was all right. Kenny had a, um, a touchdown on the ground as well. He's definitely Super Bowl MVP. Almost has to be Fryer with 76 yards, 10 receptions as well. George Pickens found the end zone, almost 100 yards for him. Um, Tyrell Youngblood in here as well. Najee, Elijah Moore, shout out to him. Dude, that Cowboys team was stacked, you know. There was one tackle for loss that entire game. That's kind of weird. There were no sacks as well. O-lines were going crazy then, but we did get one pick. And it's the reigning best DB in the league, Joey Porter Jr., the new superstar X Factor. And Super Bowl MVP, of course, goes to Kenny Pickett himself. And guys, tell you what, 
He ended it with a bang, but Cam Hayward has decided to retire after 15 years. We brought him back for one more season. He saw the vision. He knew what we had, and he goes off on the highest peak. Okay, so we have 85 mil here. We Oh, I got to get Broderick Jones back for sure. I want to just get everybody back. Like, let's run it back, you know? Nickelodeon MVP is still here. Hey, he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Not many other players can say that. <laughs> I can't even say that without laughing. <laughs> Why do you not want to rejoin us? Close to home, California, warm weather, state, Pennsylvania, no income tax. Come on, you just want to ring. Who cares? Who cares about that stuff? Sacrifice a few years to get, you know, some legacy points, get some rings on your resume. Jalen Phillips is actually excited to stay with the team. So welcome back. We traded it for him. He got us a Super Bowl. We're re-signing him back, baby. And tell you what, as a Miami Dolphins fan, I think Jalen Phillips next season is going to be incredible. I think he's going to, you know, enter those like one of the best edge rushers in the league conversations. You guys probably don't care. Oh, it's a fifth year. Okay, we'll, we'll wait till next season. Then Kel Holgum, you can honestly walk. Okay, well, we enter free agency with 70 million in cap room. Zach Martin is here. Ronnie Stanley. Imagine signing those two. Imagine, imagine signing these three guys. What if I just go all out and may, build the coldest offensive line of all time? After that kind of drops off, though. Cam Jordan, only 84 overall now. Ryan Stonehouse, Quandre Diggs. Yeah, other than that, actually... There's really no real sexy names in here. What do we actually need, though, coming off a Super Bowl, of course? I need a wide receiver room is fine. Honestly, our entire offense is fine. Okay, maybe we can sign another guard there. So maybe Joel Batonio is that guy. You know, he wants a ring as well. Inner division, he moves as well. Defensively, another linebacker would be nice. Defensive line help. Yeah, Cam Hayward's gone now. That's going to suck. And we're not going to have a high draft pick like we've had for the past few years. It's going for Batonio. Just a one-year deal. Bolster off that O-line even more. I'll offer him a little bit more money than he wants. And we're his top offer, so hopefully he joins us. All right, just Petonio, we're getting Brian Cook and then Kate LeVon Chase on as well, just for depth, uh, to be honest with you. Looks like we got... Wait, what? He went to the... I had a way better deal. I had a way better offer than them. And now we lost out on Zach Martin as well. You've got to be kidding. And Ronnie Stanley's gone. Bro. All right, we got Brian Cook as well. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, I private worked out this guy on week 11. He's around one to two projection corner. And he's a top five talent in the class. Key ratings, as you can see, B in zone, press, catching, A man coverage as well. So it's going to be over 80. Um, change of direction, elite. He ran a 4 3 8. Other than that, his combine was kind of disappointing. But of course, we do know this man is a top five talent. So I will not hesitate if he's there for me. All right. So checking out the draft, the guy we want, Greg Easley, is number 30. We have pick number 32, of course. We only have our first fourth or four round picks as well. So we might have to trade up if we're going to get him. And I, I definitely really want him. Question is, do I just sim to a pick or do I just gamble and trade up right now? I'm just going to sim to a pick and hopefully he's still there. <laughs> All right, so last season, of course, after adding in Jalen Phillips, Alex Highsmith really didn't do anything. <laughs> he only had two tackles throughout the entire season, so he barely saw any game time. I'm going to offer him for number 18 just to try it out for first, or just to try it out first. It's about halfway, actually. Maybe we'll try our second round pick first, pick number 64. Okay, it's not even close. Probably going to have to add in our first, but I will try to ask for a little bit more. Maybe like a third round pick and then a future fourth. I'm not too sure. We'll start off high just to see what they say. It is green. Let's take away that fourth. It's still green. We'll take away the third. And it's accepted. Alex Hotsmith is going the other way. Like I said, he is an 85 overall. Actually, a pretty decent player nowadays. He's just not getting utilized here um, to his full, you know, capacity. First round pick as well. Going up to 18. Let's go get our guy. You know, we don't really have a position to need anywhere. You know, we're coming off that Super Bowl. We retained a lot of the, our good players as well. Besides, of course, Cam Hayward. But... It's a bit of a luxury pick, but this DB room is going to be nasty with Greg easily added on. We got Minka, of course, who's been here for a while, but then the youngsters and Givens. You got Jalen Anderson, Smith. You got um, Joey Porter Jr., who's next factor now. I mean, that DB room is going to be nasty for many, many years to come. And then you got TJ Watt and Jalen Phillips rushing the passer as well. I mean, this defense is so good. We might go back to back. We might three-peat. Greg easily walk over the team, hidden development, 94 speed, 96 change of direction, 92 acceleration, Second round pick now. Now I had a left guard. This guy right here, Matt West. He looks like a beast. 95% scout. I had a right tackle. Looks like he is gone now. There was a right end as well. That or no, a left end that was decent. Looks like he's gone as well. And then there was a linebacker that I had fully scouted. 90%. He's around three to four as well. So we should be able to get him and the left guard. I'm gonna go to the left guard first because that's a bigger need after losing um whoever our left guard was, Simalo, I believe it was. So Matt West is going to be my guy here. 21 years old, out of Wisconsin as well. So a bit of a project, but as you can see from his ratings, really, really good in everything there. I mean, great in five different, or in four different categories. The others are good as well. Combine, he killed it too. Matt West, 
Welcome to the Super Bowl winners, baby. Another hidden development. 91 strength as well. He's our new plug and play left guard. Now I just kind of want to check out where this linebacker is going because I, I definitely want him. I feel like we need him. We didn't uh, resign Cole Holcomb and I didn't really get any replacements. He's at number 33. It's right on the brink. The Rams are willing to accept a 2028th second round pick and then a 2027 sixth and seventh to move to 78 here in the third round. I'm going to keep my third round pick as well. I mean, why not do that? Wait. What? Did I just trade for the wrong pick? Wait, no way. The Rams, 78. Okay, well, well where is it? <laughs> Sim to user pick? Okay, I'm here. I don't know why I just glitched out like that. Funnily enough, though, we traded with the Rams, who, and we're kind of taking the Rams approach, right? Just setting the picks now, getting the guys we want. We're a Super Bowl winning team. We're in a win now mode. We want to go all out now. Glenn Hanna is going to be my next pick, a linebacker to Georgia. You know, that combination tends to do pretty well in the league. Look at his ratings. Great acceleration, elite speed. He was the number one fastest 40 yard dash as well in the combine. Looks pretty solid. Might be my starting linebacker, of course, um, um, alongside Joseph Murray, who we drafted last year as well. Our defense is so young and it's going to be so, so good for many years to come. He is only normal development, unfortunately, but he should be a decent overall. Ben Peterson, the center day three projection with our last pick in the uh, in the third round here. He looks pretty insane. Elite acceleration, change of direction, great speed, great agility too. Connor Williams is getting a little up there in age now, and I'm pretty sure he only has about one year left on his contract. So after he's gone, we got his replacement right on the squad already. Ben Peterson, welcome to the squad. We might start him right away. Honestly, hidden development, you know, we got, he's got another decade with us at least, you know. Hey, for winning the Super Bowl, I think we just had a banging draft. Greg Easley. 78 overall everybody in the class that we drafted was over 70 74 for matt west 73 glenn hannah 71 for the center and then the uh cpu drafted me calvin randolph there in the fourth round let's go check out the class as a whole there was an eight there's an 81 overall safety who went number 14 andrew jacobs i was eyeing i was eyeing when i was scouting out this class but he was like the number he went number four i believe that was you know i was debating if i could trade up for him but we ended up doing really good so of course i wasn't going to trade up that high for him i think didn't i miss out on a superstar x factor last year we could have had two i mean i'm not i wasn't going to trade up for this guy but you know we could have had two which would have been cool but we don't need him we don't need him right so it's a bit of a luxury pick um greg usually as you can see here 78 overall was a top five talent in the entire class class was all right we haven't seen like a generational generational guy you know what i mean i'm talking like 85 86 87 overall we've seen none of that of course another year means another we've seen enough real hidden development we got greg easley matt west brian peterson we got to do greg easley right he was he was our main guy our first round pick we traded up to get him hopefully he's special and ladies and gentlemen greg easley is no, oh, wait, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta reset the depth chart. Greg Easley is a superstar. Okay, we definitely like that. We traded up for him and we made the right decision. We're gonna make him my CB three for now. We still have Sean Murphy bunting here as well. We got Thomas, who's still a start of element, seventy five overall. He's progressing quite nicely as well. Our DB room is just nasty. Year number four for your reigning Super Bowl champions. We are an eighty four overall squad, which I believe we were still last year as well. Um, despite Kenny Pickett getting superstar in year one, he's still only eighty three overall, which is quite disappointing. Even after Super Bowl MVP though, hopefully he can boost him up this year. Najee's up to a ninety. George Pickens eighty nine overall. We got Matt West to be here um, as our left guard now. We got Peter who we drafted too offense is going to be good once again we're going to stay with cowboys playbook probably i mean if it ain't broke don't fix it right now we did lose cam hayward which is a pretty big i mean it's a massive loss on the defensive line um there just really wasn't any good talent on, at that position in the draft which is why i ended up going with greg easily as a whole so hopefully these guys can um you know hold it down three guys that we drafted as well one of our own we moved nigel keys to middle linebacker as well a guy we drafted last year hopefully he can take over from um the hole we lost from cole holgum guess we'll put easily as our slot corner back because i want him to get reps right away we got um tj watt of course jalen phillips here bradford is going to be the number one rush defensive tackle now with of course cam hayward gone so hopefully he can step up and at the mid-season mark we are five and two currently Let's go check out some hidden developments as well left guard is only a uh, star and peterson we're not going to have of course should i start him and of course we already saw greg easily should i start peterson over connor williams not gonna do it not yet not yet player negotiations this year we got joey porter minka fitzpatrick broderick jones is now here that's kind of it connor williams um murphy bunting i, I this guy just brought back some bad ptsd bro <laughs> that jesus christ um joey is there a reason you have little to no interest in rejoining us close to home california all right well i, I can't do much about that but i would actually really like to keep you though we got you to superstar x factor um which i was honestly not expecting that's pretty crazy even though i wasn't looking to return this offer is getting real tempting did you accept it or not 
He didn't. Okay, well, <laughs> Minka, 29 years old now, but I'm just going to lock him down. He's still the best safety in the league. Won us that Super Bowl last year. He's excited to stay, of course. And then Broderick Jones, who has no interest in joining as well. No mentor, no income tax. Shut up. Blah, blah, blah. How about I just give you a lot of money? What are you going to say now? And that's what I thought. That's what I thought, Broderick. And you know what? With us being so good, I'm not even going to go to week 11 to do the focus scouting because our, our pick's going to be late once again here. Let's just go straight to the playoffs. Let's try to go back to back. Oh, okay. A little less wins from last season. I believe we had 14 wins last year. We go 11 and 6. We are playing in the wildcard round against the Patriots as well. Still finished number one in the AFC North, though. Ooh. Look who's on top for passing leaders. It's Kenny Pickett. 4,500 yards. I mean, we'll go check it out more as well. George Pickens gets up there as well for the receivers. Yeah, hey, I don't know about you, but I'll sacrifice a few wins for some more statistics. Number one in offensive yards. Wow. And then top five in defense once again. Pickett was a beast. Didn't, like I said, didn't change any playbooks or anything because, of course, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, Kenny Pickett took the next step up after winning Super Bowl MVP. He is feeling himself now. 4,500 yards, a career high. 37 touchdowns, a career high. Six touchdowns or six interceptions, a career low. Najee Harris was once again an absolute tank in the backfield. 20 touchdowns, five yards on average, and just about 1,500 yards as well. Pickett, once again, he'd he, he be running a little bit. 88 attempts, you know. George, oh my God, we were slinging that thing this year. George Pickens, 1,443 yards, 11 touchdowns. Tyro Youngblood, the seventh round rookie, 14 touchdowns. Or he's not a rookie. You know what I mean? Drafted player, 14 touchdowns, 1,236 yards. Elijah Moore with 999. We could have had three receivers over 1,000 there. Firemouth, a little, little bit low for his standards. Tackles made. Nigel Keys leads the way with 106. Joseph Murray right behind him. Uh, tackle for losses, 16 for Shane Hall, the Cam Hayward replacement. Remember, we drafted him a few years back. Denzel Bradford, Jalen Phillips in here as well. Sack numbers tj watt still only nine and a half this defensive playbook is like really good for like you know um they're really good at being defense but the numbers don't really pop out like i was hoping for but that's okay i'll take the wins all day long interceptions joey porter is just an absolute magnet of the ball four picks for him three for minka two for nigel keys and ladies and gentlemen look at what we got here a breakout defensive lineman now remember everybody on our defensive line are drafted players it's gonna be shane hall okay what does he have to do hold the patriots to less than 100 rushing yards or get shane hall any of the defensive statistics i believe in you shane you know cam hayward may have retired but he was still just as involved as he has always been right he was here teaching guys like shane law um bradford as well he was still really a part of the we just lost in the wild card to the patriots after winning a super bowl after having that good of a year Kenny Pickett, arguably even mvp did did we get the breakout though <laughs> kind of all i can hope for now and he was humbled I mean, we just got humbled. Bill Belichick just humbled us for real. Check out some yearly awards and Josh Allen wins MVP again. Kenny Pickett was third. I thought he had a real chance of getting it. Damn, we, we literally had nothing. <laughs> Hopefully, though, we have at least some development upgrades. Pickett, Najee Pickens, and Youngblood. What? We got four. Four Devies this year. Kenny Pickett up to X Factor. Najee Harris up to X Factor. Tyro Youngblood. This guy's been maybe the, the story of the video. Picked in the seventh round by the CPU, and he's developed into an absolute monster. You know what? Wide receiver two for sure now. And then George Pickens finally goes up to superstar. I did so many training camps with him, and he never went up defensively, though. Don't think we got anything, but we did get four on the offense, so I, I can't really complain. <laughs> and the Bills win this season's Super Bowl. We beat them last year, remember? They win 34-31 against the Niners. Super Bowl MVP, of course, Josh Allen. That would be a really fun game, and I believe this is the second um, time they've won yet. Yeah, they beat the Packers in 2024. I just clicked on staff moves. Let's go. Yo, I'm not going to lie. This game, it is so slow. The menus are so slow. I don't know why. Like, look at this, man. All right, we got to resign a lot of people. No, we're not really. Just these two. Wait, no. Chris Kivens is a fifth year. Joey Paul. Uh, not gonna lie. I really actually really want you back, though. So I'm gonna give you a lot of money. We have a ton of cap space as well. I think we had over 100 mil. So Joey Porter, I'm just gonna give him the biggest deal ever because he's our guy. He's our guy. Yeah, and after that contract, we still have 93 mil left in the tank. We got nobody else to really sign here. So we're going into year five now. I might just go all out, baby. Oh, I wanted to go all out, but the top player in this class is Dawson Knox at an 86 overall. And the second highest rated player is Ryan Stonehouse. An 85 overall punter. This class, this, this, this free agency class is terrible. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't even want anyone. <laughs> oh, his tags are bridge quarterback and mentor. That's pretty crazy. Should add massage enthusiast to it as well. I'm signing Drew Locke. Don't ask me why. <laughs> what the? What in the? What the? Who's this? 
Grayson McLaughlin, 67 overall, 25 years old, superstar X Factor. Like I, I, I guess I'll sign Tony Pollard to be a backup. I don't know. Cade Auden as, as well, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna give Young Way Koo a seven-year deal. My goat. Young Way Koo, Pollard, Christian Barmore, Cade Auden, Drew Locke. We're really going all out this free agency, you know. We actually got four of them. Who did I miss out on? Christian Barmore, right? Yeah. Who cares? We got, we got our four guys, I guess. We'll move on. There's, that, that was the worst free agency class I've ever seen. Massive, massive trade here. Like I said, we're going to go out with the bang, baby. We're trading away our first round pick. I was looking for a right tackle, and the guy that I unfortunately did want is gone. Trading two future third round picks, or our current one as well, for Jawan Taylor to be our new right tackle. And then Chris Jones, who is still a 90 overall, still an X Factor as well, should be a huge addition to our defensive line. Oh, I actually got a hidden development safety in the second round. I was just looking around, honestly, and I guess I'll take it for depth. This dude's a 75 overall as well. What a monster. Just want to check out this class real quick to see if it was anything crazy. This was also the guy that I was looking at that I said got taken from me. He's the number one rated player in this class. Goes to inner division as well to the Bengals. Kind of pain would have been cool. Is he crazy? Ooh. That would have been that would have been a nice way to end the video. But I'll take uh Jawan Johnson and of course Mr. Chris Jones. Of course, you guys know the drill. I'm gonna reveal Quinton Benjamin, the safety we got. Oh, I said Jawan Johnson. Who the heck's Jawan Johnson? Isn't that a tight end for like the Saints? Jawan Taylor, I meant. Um, we're in year five now after a very disappointing year four. We're up to an 88 rated squad, no 88 offense, 89 defense. Pickett, Najee, Youngblood, all up to X Factor. George Pickens finally up to superstar. We have a full star development offensive line. Peterson, unfortunately, only was star development. Uh, Fryermuth still developing like a monster as well. And defensively, the safety, right? He is only a star, so nothing too crazy. Um, let's make easily the number two, because why the heck not? We actually lost Sean Murphy Bunting, but we got my boy Thomas, who can finally step up now. We got jo Chris Jones now here as well. This team looks really good. I'm excited. Hopefully, we can make it back. I'm just going to go straight to the playoffs. I'll see y'all there. Or, since last year was so disappointing, I could do a few training camp drills. You got me messed up, bro. Hell no. <laughs> bro, this team, this team is just nasty. We we once again got a bye week 14 and 3. This season we were fourth in offensive rating or offensive yards. I don't know why I said rating. Seventh in defensive, um, which is kind of a drop off from the last few seasons. Pick it. He had less yards than last year, less touchdowns, less interceptions too, which is nice, but I mean, we went 14 and 3, so I will take this all day long. Najee, once again, over 20 touchdowns, 4.7 to carry, 1,200 yards. He is such a beast. George Pickens, once again, almost 1,400 yards. Fryermuth had a big bounce back in year 938. Tyrell Youngblood, Elijah Moore did their thing. Defensively, this time it's Joseph Murray leading the way for tackles, made 24 tackle for losses for Chris Jones, 12 sacks and TFLs. I don't know why I said that backwards for TJ Watt. Um, it looks like he was a sack leader as well. Bradford with seven, actually. Jalen Phillips, only five and a half there. And then Jalen. Anderson and Chris Gibbons leads the way for interceptions and Joey Porter did not have one that's pretty crazy if we could end this video off with another Super Bowl that would be amazing and we got the Buffalo Bills once again who are two times winners in this video we beat them in the year we won it they're only nine and eight they are hot though so they got some momentum about them but hopefully we can beat them and advance ourselves into the AFC Conference Championship once again we, we smoked them 45 21 we're now here against the Broncos who go 12 and 5 surely it's not Russell Wilson under center anymore who knows who it is they do got that boy PS2 though who was nasty with it we lose I should have hopped in I should have hopped in I was considering it as well but I wanted to hop in the Super Bowl dang it we lose 28 20. who's even on their team like who is their quarter we got cooked by Greg Dulcich, bro. Are you come on, man. And hey, the Broncos ended up winning it all anyway. 28-21 beating out Bryce Young in the Carolina Panthers. Super Bowl MVP is that boy Javante Williams. Broncos franchise GOAT. If you know, you know. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be wraps for our first Madden 24 rebuild. Before we uh sign out though, let's go ahead and check out the squad overall as a whole. And let's start out with no one else other than Kenny Pickett. I still cannot believe we got him up to superstar in year number one from a mini camp drill from the training camp overall as a whole um he was awesome though he developed actually really nicely it was a little slow three seasons in but after we won the the super bowl he won super bowl mvp he started developing into an animal he put up some crazy stats as well ratings here look incredible why is it why is it cut out like this why doesn't it just go all the way down 
why <laughs> that, that makes no sense but as you can see though his first three seasons were a little bit suspect he was throwing you know only about 25 ish touchdowns only 3,500 yards and throwing a ton of interceptions as well but this season we won the super bowl and then bang it really unleashed a beast 4,537 and 6 4,227 and 5 this season he could have won mvp as well i believe he finished third but at the end of the day brought us a lombardi got a super bowl mvp too can't complain can he pick it and at the beginning of this video you know i mentioned maybe catering this offense towards Najee harris building around him making him the star and he he was a monster his first season was all right for us 1200 yards 4.3 carry 13 touchdowns but after that he really took the next step into superstardom 1600 yards five a carry 15 touchdowns 20 touchdowns five a carry 1500 yards 4.7 a carry this year 21 touchdowns Najee harris was a beast and i hope he can find somewhere um or this form you know once again in real life I say once again like he's done it you know what i mean i like Najee, man i hope he i hope he's successful i also asked at the beginning of the video if, is george pickens the best wide receiver in the league he, he developed into definitely one of them 95 overall with morale superstar development as well you'll love to see elijah moore who we got in free agency in like year two year three developed quite nicely never went up dev traits but 85 overall um it's not bad at all but tyro youngblood is definitely maybe my favorite you know part of this rebuild now 26 years old going into his fifth year out of yukon Tyro Youngblood was the gem of all gems in the draft. Like, well, he, he actually didn't have crazy speed. I thought he had more, but short route in the slot, he was nasty. 88 medium route, 95 short route, 94 catching traffic, 92 catching. He cannot run deep for his life, but he's a slot monster, that's for sure. Still on his rookie contract as well, 1.06 mil we're paying this man. I mean, that, that is an absolute steal. As you can see, though, drafted in the seventh round, pick number seven by the CPU. I can't even take credit for that. That was all the computer thank you very much Pratt Fryermuth also actually went up to superstar development here in the last year very nice the O-line was also pretty sick shout out to Isaiah Wynn who was here a few years KJ Franklin Brian Peterson of course Connor Williams was our Super Bowl winning center we got West here as well Broderick Jones developed all right only an 83 overall he didn't really do anything spectacular but he was the franchise tackle no doubt oh actually before we go to the defense shout out to my guy Wayne Ross the fullback that I actually manually drafted myself we hopped into the I believe it was the AFC Conference Championship watched him score a touchdown as well and i believe that was for us to take the lead for the first time that game which ended us getting us the victory overall shout out wayne ross baby draft fallbacks and then defensively the defense was pretty outstanding throughout this whole video it was top five on multiple occasions of course a huge shout out to mr cameron hayward who did retire on us and it looks like chris jones did as well but cam hayward of course the steelers legend the steelers beast happy to uh, let him leave with a super bowl and on top of the game shane hall we got elston bradford all these guys were drafted they did all right nothing too crazy though never went up dev traits as well but similarly to kenny pickett joey porter we got up to superstar development in a training camp in the very first season and he developed into a monster corner the cb1 like i mentioned um in the first season as well he actually eventually even went up to superstar x factor one best db in the afc as well jalen anderson i never I cannot believe he never went up to start development. We got him. He was an amazing talent in the draft. Only normal though, which was pain. We did get Gray easily later on top five talent, superstar development. If we got him just a little bit earlier, he would have developed into a 90 overall, maybe even an X factor as well. And then Cam Thomas, who was kind of just a depth um, rotational piece at corner throughout this entire video. We had a lot of good depth at corner and safety as well with Chris Givens, who I believe was my very first pick of the video and Madden 24 as a whole. So very happy to get a, um, a hidden development there. Unfortunately, he didn't go up to superstar or anything like that. Either Either Minka Fitzpatrick, 98, superstar development. How does he not have X Factor as it is? I don't know, but it's still Minka. Can't complain about that. Jalen Phillips, who we traded for in year three, he elevated our defense to another level, helped us win that Super Bowl. Of course, we got Nigel Keys, Je I almost said Jamal Murray, Joseph Murray here as well. Shout out Cole Holgum, who was here for a while. TJ Watt was, of course, TJ Watt. He's got to be like 34, 35 now. He's only 33 still. He actually wasn't that i'm not gonna say he wasn't good because it's still tj watt right but he didn't really put up crazy numbers i should say right he only had about 13 sacks maybe it was his highest he had nine he had like eight i was expecting a little bit more and ladies and gentlemen that is going to be officially wrapped for our first madden 24 rebuild um very successful we brought home the lombardi and we built a monster of a team that should be good for even more years to come as well so very excited with how we did here on our first rebuild of course i'm uh, very excited though guys i am back i want to do a rebuild of every single team in the league as well so let me know down in the comments which team you guys would like me to see or like me to do next whether it's your favorite team or a team that you simply would just like to be rebuilt i got some challenges on the way as well and then i might be doing some other franchise content as well i've been i've been brainstorming this whole time still working on my craft doing all that good stuff we are officially back though if you guys are still here and you've been subscribed for a while 
really appreciate you guys still watching the video, man. It honestly means a lot. I wanna, you know, I wanna, I wanna see where things can go with this. I'm very excited to just get back on track on everything again, just get in the rhythm too. So, thank you guys for still being here. Thank you for still watching. If you still made it, if you aren't subscribed, of course, subscribe, like the video as well. That would mean a ton and help me grow um, massively as a whole. And of course, like I said, comment down below which team I should do next. And I'll see you guys on the next video, man. See you.